it's Haley, and today is Bookmas Day 2, so I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite holiday book recommendations that are perfect to read at this time of year. I've read a fair number of holiday books because, I mean, obviously, if you didn't know by now, I really love the holidays. I love Christmas. I love everything about it. The festivities, the joy, it's just like my favorite time of year. So I definitely have read my fair share. If you watched yesterday's Bookmas video, then you know I have plans to read a lot more this year, but I do still have some really great recommendations for you that I have already read. Before we get into the video, don't forget to click that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post new videos because I'm going to be posting a new video every single day for the entire month of December and you don't want to miss any of those. So with that being said, let's get into my holiday book recommendation. I'm going to start off with the one that I actually ended up finishing today, but I literally for days now have not been able to find my copy. So I've been reading it on my e-reader. I don't know where I put it. I'm pretty sure I included it in the book haul that I filmed a couple of days ago, but now like I can't find it. All the other books from that book haul are in various places on the floor, but that book is absolutely nowhere to be seen. But I did finish it and it was really good. And that book is A Holly Jolly Diwali by Sonia Lolly. I was really excited when I saw this book because a lot of these books are focused on like the traditional Western or I mean a lot of them are actually set in England for some reason, but they're focused on that side of the holidays and Christmas specifically. I do have one that I'm going to read that is focused more on Hanukkah, which is really exciting. If you have any other recommendations for different holiday themed more diverse books then please do leave them down below for me but a holly jolly diwali i was so excited about because i've never read about diwali i don't know that much about it so it seemed like a really great read and i was pleasantly surprised by how much i enjoyed it i hadn't read anything by the author before but i thought it was such a fun and educational at the same time read because you're following this character who has just been laid off from her job. She is having a really hard time with that and she ends up deciding to go to her best friend's wedding in Mumbai. So she's going to India as an American Indian woman for the first time. She's never actually been to India because her parents couldn't afford it. So as she's exploring India and at the time of Diwali, she's trying to find out more about the holiday. She's asking a lot of people about it, but she also is encountering her culture firsthand and it's really nice to see her being exposed to that and how she is really developing on her own and coming into her own as an American Indian woman. So I loved following her and she also has this adorable romance plotline obviously. I found that the story more so was focused on her own personal development which I really liked but there also is kind of an insta love but really really cute romance going on there as well. It's a story that focuses a lot on family and friendship apart from that romance but also the backdrop of Diwali was really interesting interesting to me. I loved learning more about it and it just seemed like such a beautiful experience for her. So I had a blast with reading this book and definitely think it is perfect for the holiday season. I'll just start off with all the books that I don't actually own a copy of. So I mean I do own a copy of this one but I don't know where it went. Like a lot of these I just don't know where my copies of them went and it's different from the first one because the first one I don't know where it went for literally no reason. The other one I kind of put away my Christmas books for during the year and then take them out as like decoration when Christmas comes. So I think some of them I left at my parents' house and then they brought them when they visited for Thanksgiving in October, but now I don't know where I actually put them, which is just, that's what moving is. I've just given up on finding anything that I can't find. So the next book that I want to talk about is The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. Cynthia Hand is an author that I've read quite a few of her books before, but The Afterlife of Holly Chase is honestly unlike anything I've ever read before in general. This is a Christmas Carol retelling, but it's really different because it's set in like a contemporary setting, but it also has some kind of Thank <laughs> you. I don't want to say sci-fi, but sort of sci-fi. There's like some techie elements to it. So the main character is obviously a really unlikable main character. She is not a good person, but she ends up being, as she dies, she ends up being the new ghost of Christmas past. So it's a very interesting concept and you get to kind of watch her develop from being this horrible person to kind of like slowly 
learning, you know, the Christmas Carol story and everything. So it's definitely a very different Christmas read, but I think that's what makes it a good one. Next is Let It Snow by Lauren Miracle, Maureen Johnson, and John Green. I read this book a few years ago and then I actually tried to watch the movie. I think it was last year and I wasn't a big fan of the movie, but the book is really enjoyable. It follows three different Christmas stories, one by each author, but they all end up connecting. So they all have their own thing going on. They're all very weird kind of what you would expect from John Green, like that quirkiness to them. So they're definitely different, but it's really fun to see them all interconnect and how that ends up happening. I think it definitely is a story that brings the Christmas holiday spirit to life. And I enjoyed the book, even though I wasn't a huge fan of the movie, I did really like the book. So next up is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. I read this book last year because it came out last year and I was so excited to see that Christina Lauren was coming out with a Christmas book because Christina Lauren, they are my favorite, favorite authors. I love them. They write such great romances. Like they're my favorite adult romance authors. So I was so pumped to see they were coming out with a Christmassy story. And I, I might reread this one because I kind of wish that it hadn't come out last year because I had such a hard time around the holidays last year that I think it kind of tainted my enjoyment of this book just the tiniest bit. I did still really like it, but it did like, I was just so sad about Christmas and not being able to spend it with my family that reading this book that is literally about like spending Christmas with family was kind of tough for me and may have made it so I didn't like it as much as I might if I read it now. But anyways, this is following a main character who is going, like she feels really lost in her life, which relatable, but she is going to Utah to her family's cabin where they have spent the holidays for her entire life. But she ends up finding out that this actually is going to be the last time that they are spending the holidays there. So she's heartbroken about that. So as they are driving home after the holidays, she ends up sending this plea to the universe to ask like what she should do to make herself happy. And then, you know, fade to black moment, there's an accident and she wakes up on the plane on the way to Utah, like that trip never even happened. And it's a Groundhog Day situation where she keeps on going back and getting the chance to relive that holiday, that final holiday there and try and do it right. Now, there's also a romance there it's like a second chance romance and I didn't love the romance but it is a great holiday story like you're going through all the traditions with them that they're doing and it totally captures the holiday spirit and just feels like a good cozy Christmassy read. Next up is Dash and Lily's Book of Dares and Mind the Gap Dash and Lily by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. So I am missing one of the books here because it is actually a trilogy. They're like companions because they're like not following one after the other. I don't think you really have to read all of them. I recommend that you read these two. So the other one is The 12 Days of Dash and Lily, but I wasn't really a big fan of The 12 Days of Dash and Lily. However, I did really love both of these. So Dash and Lily's Book of Dares is number one, then 12 Days would be number two, and then this one would be number three. I read this one last year and I was really nervous going into it just because I didn't like the 12 Days so much, but Oh, I enjoyed this one a lot more. So if you are unfamiliar with this, it actually was adapted into a Netflix show. They did a fantastic job. It was so freaking good and I'm definitely going to have to rewatch it again this year because it was just absolutely adorable. I loved it. So it is essentially this romance that starts in the Strand bookstore in New York City where there's this notebook that has been left there by the main character, Lily, and Dash ends up finding it and they start communicating through that notebook and basically spending the holidays like starting a relationship together in New York City. So the setting is really important to it. And I felt like that came through with this one as well because in this one, it's the same thing, Christmas and Dash and Lily are spending their time in London, England. So that was awesome. I loved the change of setting. I thought it was done really well. So these are very solid Christmas reads. So much fun and definitely you should watch the Netflix adaptation. Like it's such a good show, honestly. Kind of switching gears here. Next we have a real Christmas classic. If there ever was a Christmas classic, I think this is like the number one. Christmas classic. And that is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. So if you haven't read the original Christmas Carol, I think that it's really worth the read. I've read a few Charles Dickens books, but this one is my favorite. I just think you see the origin of the story and it's a 
very enjoyable classic for me. Obviously this story has been adapted in a million ways, a million different movies and everything, but I think that nothing beats the original. It just like transports you to Christmas in Victorian times. This copy that I have has some illustrations in it, which is really fun. And you get to follow the classic story of Scrooge as he is met by all the different ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future. And it's, it's just such a good book. Like, I don't know. I have fun with this one. And I feel like it's kind of one that I would theoretically, because <laughs> I have so many new Christmas books to read, but Theoretically, I would love to read this every year. Next is 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. I read this one a couple years ago now, but it is such a great Christmas read. This is a YA Christmas story, which I feel like is a little bit more rare. There's quite a few adult Christmas romances, but as far as YA goes, there aren't that many. And I was so pleasantly surprised by this one. Not that like I didn't think I was going to like it, but it was just so much better than I thought it was even going to be. So you follow the main character Character, what is her name? Sophie. And Sophie has just broken up with her boyfriend. She was planning on spending the holidays with him. It was going to be great, but then he ends up breaking up with her. So her holidays spent with her family are kind of tainted by that. Like she's really upset. So she's with her cousins and her aunts and her grandparents, and they decide that to cheer her up, they are going to plan 10 blind dates for her over the course of the Christmas holiday. They are like ridiculous ridiculous dates. Some of them are ridiculous with all of these different people and they're just all trying to match her up. And it's such a fun story about romance, but also primarily family. It really focuses on family and extended family and how important that is to her. And I just loved the connection between the family there and watching her go on all these dates. It was a lot of fun, honestly. And definitely, if you haven't read this one, if you've been kind of hesitant, you should probably pick it up. I think actually they did a companion or sequel that came out this past year, but I didn't know about it. But then I found out about it. So maybe I'll read it next year. It's not a Christmas story, but there is more following Sophie, which is fun. Next is One Day in December by Josie Silver. So this is kind of like, I know not everyone loves this book, but I really enjoyed it. I think it ended up on my favorites of the year list. I can't remember if I read this last year or if it was in 2019, but whenever it was, I really liked this one. So you are following a character who sees this guy from a bus stop and it's like a missed connection. She like love at first sight and everything, but then she ends up seeing him again. The only problem is that it is when her best friend is introducing him as her new boyfriend. So that obviously, complicates things. So it's just kind of like a heartbreaking romance and it follows years and years and years. So it's not only at Christmas, but like Christmas is an important time in it, but you're following them as they keep on having like so many struggles, like the will they won't they sort of thing. But I honestly really enjoy this book. And my final holiday recommendation for you guys is The Chaos of Standing Still by Jessica Brody. So this one's kind of different because it's not Christmas, but it is a New Year's story. So it is set at Denver Airport and the main character is trying to fly back home and there is this blizzard. So like all of the flights have been grounded and she ends up being stuck at the airport. Now, this is a really hard time of year for her because it's been a year now since her best friend was killed in an accident. So she still has on her phone this one unread text from her best friend. It would be the last word she ever said to her, but she hasn't opened it because she's too afraid and she's just having a hard time processing her grief. So while she's at the airport, she ends up physically running into this guy and they end up switching phones on accident. So she's like panicked that that text will be read, but it's about them and their time in the airport together. And as like, she is really working through the struggle of the trauma of losing her friend. And now it having been a year, like this day coming back again and how she's going to deal with that. So it's a very emotional story for a holiday book, but it's also a really good one, very impactful, and I enjoyed it a lot. So those are all of my holiday book recommendations for right now. I hope that next year I'll have a lot more to share with you guys. I should if everything goes according to plan, <laughs> seeing as I have a lot on my TBR for this month, but please do let me know what your holiday book recommendation is. I would love to know, or if you have read any of these books, if you enjoyed them too. Also, once again, don't forget to subscribe because I'll be putting up a 
new video for every single day for the entire month of December. So tomorrow for Bookmas Day 3, we are going to be doing subscriber recommendations. So I asked you guys for like a very specific prompt and then I'm going to be recommending a book based on that. Whether it's for something for you to gift or for a wish list, it's a really fun video. I always love doing that one. So I hope that I will see you tomorrow for that video. But thank you once again so much for watching. And like I said, I'll see you tomorrow with another new video. Bye!